Hi everyone, welcome back to Nina's Chelsea Corner. Welcome to my channel if you're new around here. I can't even lie to you guys, I am so exhausted, frustrated, annoyed and everything else that follows that I can't even put energy <laughs> into this match review today because I've just gotten home, I had to sit through that performance, I had to be frustrated the whole 90 minutes and Chelsea just continues to not be able to score a goal and it's like, what actually do we need to do to be able to put the ball in the back of the net? And it be on side as well as a matter. But anyways, we have to talk about it. I have to talk about it and then I just want to go to bed, guys. Because if you watch Chelsea lose 1-0 to Aston Villa, you will know that it was a great big disappointment. And where do we go from here, you may ask? Well, that is a question for I don't know who. And of course, the fan cams uh, for Chelsea Fan TV will probably be out by the time this video is uploaded. So head over there as well after you watch this video to find out exactly how I felt right after the game finished. And believe me, it's not a pretty smiley interview at all. Um, while we were filming, Egg Barley also walked past and he did not want to interact with any fans. He had his head down, didn't want to engage in any confrontation. And from what I've read on uh, social media, apparently he was in the dressing rooms. And if this doesn't scream last season, guys, and you're not getting those awful flashbacks, I don't know what does. Because honestly, it's like... Although we're only, I don't know how many games into the season now, um, it feels like we have reverted back to old ways in terms of can't score a goal, can't win a game, can't find it. Oh, guys, it's so frustrating. Like, I'm so sorry. Respectfully, the only team we've beaten in the Prem is Luton. That is not something to be proud of. It's not good enough. I'm all for the time, guys. I'm so all for the time. You know this. I literally keep banging on about trusting the process and this and that, but... I'm still absolutely certain that you need to see results on the way, regardless. doesn't matter. I know that this team cannot just be gelled overnight. You spend a billion and they need to form relationships. They need to get to know each other on the pitch. Spend time with the manager. Yes, absolutely appreciated. And the injuries as well. But you still have enough quality on the pitch to be able to put a simple chance away. You're a footballer after all. This is literally what you get paid to do. And it's not about being a world-class striker. It's literally about being able to put a chance delivered to you on a silver plate in the back of the net. And we see other teams do it against us time and time again. Yeah, can't do it. Can't do it. Anyways, guys, let's talk about how we set up. So it was uh, interesting to see that we had three left backs on the bench and we had a centre back starting at left back. So, I mean, we can see that Pochettino has been experimenting um, with these um, rotations recently, but we've also asked him to just play players where they play normally. And, you know, I think Chilwell just should have started today. I'm just not too sure what this experiment aims to achieve. It's not really achieving anything. So, yeah, I think we should just revert back to what we know um, best. So it was quite, quite strange to see that. And then, of course, yeah, fair enough. Happy to see Midrick start because it's what I've been advocating for for the longest time. He needs that run of games. But actually, I was disappointed that Pochettino brought Midrick off. He shouldn't have come off. There was just no reason for him to. You bring on, on Chilwell after that red card. Okay, so you're planning on sitting defensively. Is that the case? But then you bring on a striker 10 minutes afterwards when we've gone 1-0 down. So now suddenly you want to attack. And it's just decisions like that in the game that made me kind of question what direction we were heading in. What is it we were trying to do? So 10 men down, we're trying to sit back and defend a nil-nil draw. But then when we're one nil down, we're suddenly trying to score. And it's just like, mm, I don't know. It seems that we were fighting for a point in that game. And then we just gave up afterwards. And we were still trying, you know, there were chances created. This is why I'm so agitated because we did create chances. Midrick was whipping in balls as well, but just nobody was there to meet them. And wasteful, you know? Um, I just think that Sterling, someone that has been so, 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 so praised since the start of the season. I'm sorry, I didn't buy into that because I said, I want to see it week in, week out. Like, do it, Sterling, for a season. Do it for half a season. Do it for two seasons. Then we can really have that conversation because you're a reliable player. You're on the biggest paycheck a week. And those new signings we brought in, supposedly they are supposed to um, 
learn from you you're the role model in the team yet you're trying to dribble the ball into the back of the net every single time why are the new young players going to try and attempt shots from outside the box if that's what you're trying to do you're one-on-one -on -one with the keeper pick your corner chip him over instead you're just trying to shoot into the keeper every single time one-on-one -on -one, what literally in a clear through ball goal scoring opportunity and we flop it like we flop it other teams don't do it they capitalize on opportunities like that and that is why we get punished exactly like the way we they uh scored today aston villa you know yeah tiago silva did lose that ball he gave it away to diaby who then drove the ball very quickly found ollie watkins there levi colwell tried to block didn't manage to however do anything about that second um rebound which ollie watkins put away from an angle which we struggle to we can't score literally one-on-one -on -one with the keeper let alone from a weird angle on the left or the right or anything like that ah uh, <laughs> gosh guys i mean seriously are we in trouble now what are your thoughts because it's really really difficult to keep faith when you're you know not scoring like it's taken us forever somebody said that we've sc we've won like six games in this calendar year which is absolutely alarming you know we're 14th i think are we still 14th guys i don't know i need to actually check the table but if we are still 14th then it is worrying it is worrying because you're not telling me we're going to start climbing up in that horrific run of fixtures in november are you like we can't handle it. We're having week breaks off and then we're playing teams that have played on Thursday that are in Europe, supposedly tired, not used to juggling uh, Europe and Premier League fixtures at the same time. Yet we look like the team that had played in Europe. We look tired. They look like they'd rested for a week. It's not good enough, guys. Yes, Villa played some good football. Can't discredit their football. Yes, I'm looking at us as a team, but still not even able to challenge the slightest little bit. Oh... I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Guys, I don't really want to continue on because it's just the same thing, chewing the same, same thing. And honestly, I wish I wasn't getting this negative this early on because where do I find myself in a month or two or three and then towards the end of the season? I'm going to have grey hair, guys, by the end of this year. <laughs> it's actually not funny. I don't know why I'm smiling. It's, it's uh, delirious at this point. But yeah, subscribe, like my video. Comment your thoughts. Let's have a discussion. I know you're all going to be frustrated and I hear you on that. Completely valid. Up the chels.